What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, Technique Tuesday. We're gonna be breaking down some pretty cool techniques and basic techniques at that. Great fights this past weekend, had a lot of guys get knocked out with a straight right. And we're gonna be discussing overhand right versus straight right and when to throw both. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> what up everybody, everybody, what's up everybody? <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to start with the right hand. The now, straight the right hand. The straight right hand, straight right? right. They're straight both right, right hands, or they could be left hands. It yeah. really just depends on which side you have for, but for the most part, 95% of the world's right, right handed, handed, so you throw it the right hand. But just kind of, you can whatever, apply this whatever. to whatever stance you yeah. like to, to, to keep. Now the right hand or the or the straight right or the head punch or the cross or the is, two or the two is one of the most basic techniques you learn in the fight game, right? You first learn the jab, then you learn to throw the cross or the straight right or the whatever you want to call two, it. Or the, the two dim, or the dim mock or the the, dim <laughs> the death touch. The death whatever. touch, is you know, whatever your gym refers to it as. You know what I'm saying? So it's a super basic, but it's one of the most dominant strikes in the fight game. So let's talk about it real quick. For one, when you first learn a straight right or a straight left, you learn it's with the back hand, right? So it's straight from your jaw to the target. No looping, it's just a straight line. It's very effective because there is no messing around. It's straight to the point. You know what I'm talking about. So it's the fastest way to get to the target. Number two, since it's done with the back hand, you're getting your whole body. Well, you should be getting your whole body behind this technique and it starts with that back foot. So that's where it starts. It starts at the foot, the pivot. Then it goes to the hip. Then it goes to the upper body rotation. And if you do this correctly, everything should be all at one movement. It shouldn't be like bop, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. All one motion. And that back hand is right behind it, which makes it, makes it really strong because you get your whole body behind it. And you're giving a look, like, like a push with that back foot, right? Boom, you should be. I see a lot of people do this which is zero power and zero reach. You're getting maximum power and maximum reach with the straight right or head punch. So if I don't pivot my body, number one, I don't have the reach on it, okay? So I've gotta pivot, gotta turn the hip, and I've gotta rotate my body. Now if you notice, when I throw my right hand, my shoulders are in a, in a straight line, why? Because structurally, it's very strong. You got your whole body behind it, but you, you got the bone structure behind it as well. So there's no give. A lot of times when you throw the right hand, you got to pivot, and this happens. So this happens here. But if I'm like so, it's very, very strong. All right? Boom! And you get maximum reach on it. So that's what makes the straight right or head punch very effective. It's fast, and it's powerful because you get your whole body behind it. There's one thing you got to keep in mind whenever you're throwing the straight right hand. And like WB said, it's about keeping that back foot on the floor. What you don't want to do, and what I see a lot of, and Pops talks about it all the time, is when somebody throws the back hand and that back foot slides, it moves, it adjusts. That means that you are not connected to the floor, connected to the ground. And if you're not connected to the ground, how can you be pushing right. off of the floor to get power into that too? So it's very important that you keep that back foot planted on the ground so that you can actually get the power and the added benefit from that back foot. Oops. Sweet tea, hit it with that knowledge, boy. So don't let that back foot sway. Yeah. Keep that back foot planted. So, you know, there's a lot of, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you gotta look into when throwing a straight right or even a looping strike. So let's get into the looping technique. Yes, the, the, the overhand right overhand. as they call it. Now with the overhand right, we already did a video on that. We did. Talking about, discussing with Papa Ridgehand how to throw a proper overhand right. And we're gonna link that up above right here. So make sure you guys go check that out. Please go check After it out. this video. But just real quick, WB, for those who may maybe have not seen that or aren't sure how to do it, how do you throw an overhand right? Go. Well, I'm gonna show this in front of you real quick. Number one, the overhand right is a very, very powerful technique, but it takes longer to get to the target, which is why I believe a straight right hand is good if you're just throwing one or the other. The right, the overhand right, I like to, I like to set it up first, because if I just throw it, there's a lot of telegraph that's involved in doing an overhand right. I've seen a lot of guys literally close their eyes, throw an overhand right, and knock dudes out. But if you're a strike, if you're sparring or fighting a high-level striker, they're gonna see it coming. 
because there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of movement involved, right, before the hand gets to the target. So I like to set it up with the jab before I even throw my overhand right. Or, in Dan Henderson's case, the leg kick. Ooh. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. The leg kick. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. All right, so when you throw the overhand right, there is some pivot, but a lot of the power comes for, from the rotation of your upper body. So it's not, just, it's not just the back foot. It's a lot of things involved. Almost like when you throw a baseball, that's why you can throw a baseball so far. So back foot turns, and some people throw them a lot wider than others. Some people keep it a little bit tighter when they throw the overhand right. I prefer the tighter of the two. So you got the body rotating, big overhand, or keeping a little, a little bit shorter. I like to keep mine a little bit shorter. Now the positioning of the fist is important as well. Some people like to throw the, hand, the overhand right with the pinky facing outward. I don't prefer that because if the guy fades back just a little bit, you're looking at a boxer's fracture right there, hitting with the pinky, the pinky knuckle, which is not as powerful as the two big knuckles. So I throw more like a hook, like here, when I throw my overhand right. That way I'm focused on the two big knuckles which can take, take more of a pounding, <laughs> it's just funny to say, more of a pounding than your two small knuckles. So overhand right kind of comes like so. If you do take the more traditional overhand right approach where you have the big loop, would you say that that would be an opportunity to go pinky out? So you're almost like you're hitting with the back of the fist if you have that wide trajectory or would you still keep your knuckles? I, because yeah. I did kickboxing for so long, I've always, I've always kept my palm towards me. You have a lot of guys who started MMA and they're taught to throw the hands a little different because of the MMA glove. So I've actually seen people throw here, which is pinky out, and I've actually seen people roll their palm all the way outward, striking with the, almost like the back of the hand, pretty much, back of the knuckle. But I feel like here, there can be a little wrist give as your hand makes contact to the noggin, right? Here, you're using more of the forearm, which is a lot stronger than the outside of the forearm, to hold that wrist into place. So I like to keep my palm towards me. That's just my preference. Really play with that, you know what so I mean? Obviously, yeah, yeah. It depends on how you practice and how you're comfortable with it. it you know, any one of them can be effective yeah. as long as you're familiar with that technique. Yeah, what I like about the straight right and the overhand right is in a fight, uh, a, a straight right hand can beat an overhand, and I've seen overhand beat a straight. It's all on when, on how you set it up, and when, uh, what kind of timing you have with those strikes. Which is what we're getting into Woo! right now. All right, so now getting into when you should throw each of these techniques. Mm -hmm. Now, starting with the straight right hand, WB. When is the most effective time you believe to throw a straight right hand? Okay, so there's a lot involved with that. You know, your yeah. partner's positioning, what techniques they're throwing, what side they have, what forward. side they have forward. But I want to keep it very brief for you guys today. A great time to throw a straight right hand is when your opponent's throwing a leg kick, right? Number one, if you throw a leg kick correctly, your head should be pretty far away because you're rotating the foot all the way and leaning backwards. So when you pivot, yes, say your head's farther away. Yep. But a lot of people don't do that. They want to get to that calf quick and they don't rotate on that front foot, which puts your head closer to my fist. So you get a guy that likes to throw a, throw, like to throw a leg kick, smoke him with the right Especially hand. Especially lazy leg kicks. Lazy leg kicks, yes, exactly. Throw a lazy leg kick, boom! Drill him with a straight right hand, okay? That's yes. one way. Yep. Okay. Another way is when a guy's throwing a looping punch and not setting it up. If you throw a looping technique, you want to set it up with something because, like I said, there's a lot of telegraph. And when a, you have an aggressive fighter, so a guy coming in trying to hit you with that big haymaker, prime time to throw it. So a few ways you can do that. Number one, you can fade back, let the punch swing through, then throw your straight right. Number two, you can meet him in the middle. So as, that, as you see that technique coming, and a lot of times you see this because of the hip rotating first, you meet them in the middle, before they hit you with that right hand. <laughs> you all right, dude? Just glitch, bro. About, yeah, I was about to say, it's like, what happened, man? Like, yeah. We're in the Matrix. Yeah, for you real, know, dude. We have to, it's a whole discussion on some. We'll yeah. get into that later. Why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? <laughs> so, perfect time to do it. So, fade back when you throw, whoop, come back with your right hand, or meet him in the middle. Bah! Just like so. And with that, that, you have to have a good time. So there you go. When and when not to throw a straight right hand. Actually, mm -hmm. it was more of a when to throw a straight yeah. right hand than when not to. So. Yeah.
Moving on to when to throw the overhand right. You kind of touched on it during the breakdown. You, you kind of want to set it up, but they can also be effective countering tools as well. Yes. WB, go. Okay. <laughs> so a good time to throw it is when a person is throwing a jab. So when that jab is coming, you, you, first of all, you know your partner's a good jabber. Okay, you know this going to the fight. Or maybe you have adapted to it that, man, this guy's hitting me with a jab a lot. I need to, I need to hit him with something bad to keep them away, keep them from jabbing me all this time. Um, so when that jab's coming, uh, I like to move my head offline when I throw my overhand right. And you see this all the time. In a closed stance, I want to move my head to the inside, but that's the thing. Usually when somebody throws a jab, there's going to be a right hand coming right behind it. So it's kind of dangerous to throw that in an opening stance, but it can happen. It's also unexpected though as well. It is. It is unexpected. So when they throw that jab, I'm moving my head offline and coming over top. Now what makes this punch so effective is that, that you got the prime area to strike. All right? One of the best areas to strike on somebody, you got the tip of the jaw, which is where I got hit, knocked out, and it didn't take a whole lot of power. The temple or even the ear. This area right behind the ear is prime spot to knock somebody out or to get them woozy. And this overhand right, it lands right there. Boom, even if it's a glancing blow. So it's, it's like, it's just perfect angle to aim for that spot. Um, it's better works in an open stance when somebody throws a jab, just because you're staying away from the backhand and you got a prime spot to hit him in the jaw. So when somebody throws a jab or a right hand, you gotta move your head offline in order to do that. You can't keep your head in the same area because you'll get jabbed. So you gotta move your head when you throw that overhand right. Number two, prime time to throw an overhand right is after you set it up with a technique, doggone it. If I just throw Don't an go. overhand right, if I just throw an overhand right, you see it coming. But when I set it up with a jab, you or got your opponent kick. or a leg kick, Dan Henderson, boom, that's when it happens. It's just because it's a it's a wide uh, movement. You know, and, and big telegraphs. There. It's a good it's a good technique to work your to work around somebody who might have longer reach as well. Oh, like yeah. you said, because it has that head movement involved. And typically when you're fighting somebody who's longer, it's a longer process for that jab to take place. Right. So you have a little bit more time where they're open, where they're exposed yep. to land that overhand right. The battle of the looping versus the, the straights. It's the not straight, gonna right? win every time, nope. as you know. Each one, they, they have their times when and when not to be thrown, but. But you gotta figure that out when you spar. You know what I mean? You gotta learn all that on when and when not to throw it. Does this beat this? Does this beat that? All in just experience in the gym and training and sparring. Gym. Training, yep. And then, and then fighting. When you're in the fight, you have to have that ability to stay calm, collected, and um, a adapt to what their game plan is, what your opponent's game plan is. Right. So there you have it guys, you got the straight right hand, the looping right hand or left hand looping punch, haymaker some people call it, oh. um, which that straight right hand was very effective this past week, which we wanted to touch on that, and we've done that before, where we talked about the overhand. So yep. go check, that, check out that video. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us, sweet team. Anything you wanna tell these guys? Nope, that's it, you said it all. Make sure you guys <laughs> hit that subscribe button, Beep. leave a like, comment and don't forget to check out our weekly podcast dropping on mondays right now we're currently on youtube and spotify working what? on apple podcasts and google podcasts right now so let's go make sure you guys if you haven't done so check out the latest episode of the new what's up everybody podcast what's up everybody everybody, everybody. anyway thank you guys for hanging out catch y'all later Peace.